How's it going, everybody? Braddock here, and today it's all about poncho shelters. Y'all check it out. All right, guys, so why go with a poncho-type shelter? And one of the main reasons is simply because of weight and space within your bag. You might be in a situation where essential gear is a priority and comfort items like the shelter behind us comes last. So you kind of got to weigh out your pros and your cons. The great thing, of course, about a poncho like this is you can wear it like a poncho so it'll protect you from the elements when moving uh, through the wood line. You can also use it as a bivy and throw your poncho liner on the inside uh, with the snaps that come with this poncho. Um, and of course, there's a million different ways to use it as a shelter, which we're going to get into right now. All right, so first thing you want to do is make a ridge line. Now, you can use trekking pole or wood that you find and cut it to size, um, but a ridge line with 550 will do the trick. Go ahead and make yourself a bowling knot or any type of loop knot, and you're going to run this around your tree. And then once you have it around the tree, make sure it's about waist height give or take, and then run your main line through the bowl and knot, and then go ahead and cinch this down. We're gonna run over to the other side. And one thing I like to do is keep about 20 feet of 550 in all my kits, and this makes for a perfect length for a ridge line. So second, we're gonna go ahead and run around this tree. Again, about waist height. And next, we're gonna go ahead and do a trucker's hitch. Now a cool trick I've learned is to go ahead and invert your hand on your 550. You're going to turn, place that over your main line, and then with your index and thumb you're going to pull through in the direction of travel. And then now you have a loop. And if you don't need it, you can pop it like so. And a quick little close up, invert your hand on your main line. You're going to rotate over where you ha now have a loop. And with your index and thumb, grab your main line and pull it through in the direction you're traveling. And if you don't need it, it's a quick release. Now that step is complete, we're going to go ahead and finish our trucker's hitch. Go ahead and wrap your tag end through that loop. and then go ahead and cinch down. Now, from here, a couple of ways to go ahead and tie this down. Uh, you can pinch your two lines here and then do a quick, quick release knot right here. That'll keep that together. And then if you don't need it, you can pull away. Um, and also I found uh, you could go through this a second time, so simply going through your loop here. And what will happen is, as those lines run over each other, basically it'll cinch itself down. So again, taking your tag in, running through the loop, finishing off your trucker's hitch. All you have to do is again, cinch that down. And then a favorite thing I like to do Go ahead and push, pinch those two lines, both your loop and the main line. And then you could finish off with a simple quick release overhand knot. Cinch that down. And now you have a ridge line. So there's a lot of really good ponchos out there. Of course, your mil spec ponchos is going to be ideal, uh, which I do have one that was issued. The problem is, of course, it's super heavy. So this is just like a simple $18, $20 um, poncho that I picked up on Amazon. But something like this that's super cheap is a great way to get into poncho camping. All right, so the first shelter we're going to do is the classic, the A-frame shelter. One of my favorites. All you're going to do is throw your poncho. And with all these shelters, it's a good idea. Go ahead and take the hood section. Make a simple little knot. And then if need be, you can also get the uh, compression strap for that hood and tie that up just so it's more secure. And again, if you do have a lot of rain. So once you have your poncho on your ridge line, we're just going to go ahead and tie down both. So here we are at the end of our 
poncho. And then one thing you could do is go ahead, if you don't have enough 550, uh, you can go ahead and make a small little loop here and feed that through your eyelid. And of course, if you have a little bit more slack, it's a lot easier to do. And then from here, you're just gonna take a, just stick and run that through. And then what you can go ahead and do from here to tighten this up, you're just gonna rotate this over and that'll pull each end a lot tighter. What I've always been a big fan of is making a loop and using this as a pressing knot. So all you're gonna do to make your pressing knot, get about you know, eight inches or so of 550, tie both lines together, you're gonna drape this over, and then feed one end through, rotate over, feed it again, and one more time. And then from here, all you're gonna go ahead and do is cinch that down and make sure those knots are nice and uh, none of the lines are rolled over each other. And what this allows you to do is move this wherever you need be. And then once you tighten this up, it's not going anywhere. So from here, all we're gonna do is run this loop end through your eyelid and then take your stick, run it through and then tighten up your pressing knot. And we're gonna go over to the other side and then doing the same thing here. Run your toggle or your stick through and then tighten this up. And once that's done, all we're gonna do is go to our four corners and stake them out with some pegs. And now you have your quick and easy A-frame shelter out of a poncho. And then next up we have the all-time favorite lean-to. And this is great for something if you're simply going to have a fire up front. Um, wind to the back, fire up front, makes for an awesome shelter. Same thing, we're doing Prusix all the way across and then uh, three stakes on the back end. Now, what you can also do is get a trekking pole or a stick and you can run it on the back end, tie a loop around that stick, run your line through your hooded section uh, so you could pull that taunt, just so you have a little bit more room up in here. Uh, but again, this makes for a phenomenal shelf. So taking your line, you can make a, another small little slip knot or bowl of knot. Tie it around your hood. Take your stick. And then all we're going to do is tie a couple loops here around this stick. And then we'll go ahead and stake this out. And that's what it'll look like on the inside. So again, you have a little bit more room to work with. Now, if you do have a lot of wind like we do today, uh, what you can go ahead and do is take one of those corners, unstake it, and then go ahead and close this on, let's say, the second grommet from the end. And now you have a closed-sided lean-to. And then if you need to close off both walls on your lean-to, all you have to do is go ahead and tie down one point and then tie down another point with roughly 18 to 24 inches of 550. And this makes also for a great shelter with a lot of wind and rain from coming uh, in different directions. And then another great poncho shelter is the wedge lean-to. Basically same thing as a lean-to, but now we have this second roofing. Great for if you do want to have a fire up front and have a little bit of rain going on. All we're doing here is a second eyelid here, running our pressic knots on both sides, sticking out the back end, and then tying down roughly, again, 18 to 24 inches of 550 out at front. Again, this is the wedged lean-to. Great shelter. 
So next up we have the Arrowhead. Again, one of my favorite shelters for a poncho just because it makes use of a lot of the material uh, that you're given. So as you can see, I have my feet all the way down at the bottom. I get a lot of cover from the wind behind me. I can have a fire up front um, and then also have my bag over here in the corner again away from the rain so makes a lot of use of your space with that poncho shelter so here's a close-up of the arrowhead we have one of the corners run into a pressing knot a corner staked out here another corner staked out there and then your last corner staked out here and then what we do with the hood is we tie another bowl in to roughly an 18 to 24 inch line and then have another pressic knot up here so as you can see we can loosen this up and then tighten this down uh, dependent on how we would like this set up the arrowhead now for our next shelter i guess i would call this the cave uh, there's a few other designs out there you can move your stakes to different eyelids and uh, configure this the way you want it. Of course this would be for a uh, heavy rainfall, uh, pretty tight on the inside so you don't have a lot of room but of course with the larger poncho or especially a tarp this would be pretty phenomenal. So all we've done is we staked out all four corners plus the one back in the middle. We have the hood tied up to our ridge line and then a stick up front. And if we want, we can go ahead and pull this guy out, stake this down, and close up all four sides. Again, pretty small shelter, uh, but if you have heavy duty rain, this is a great option. So this is me inside of the shelter. Again, pretty tight, so if you have a lot of rain, this is a great option. Um, I'm 5'10", 5'11", um, you could put more sticks up here, um, put a sock or a beanie up on top just so you don't puncture through, uh, just so you get a little bit more room. But uh, I am able to completely extend my legs out from one corner to the other corner, and then I still have enough room here for all of my gear. And last but not least, of course, you can use this as its design, which is a rain poncho. Make sure to like and subscribe down below. If you have any ideas or thoughts of videos you'd like to see here in the near future, feel free to let me know. I'm Braddock. Y'all stay ready.